Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will be talking about patch 10.1 and I will explain what you can do in order to make millions of gold during the first day of patch 10.1, which will be next Wednesday, and also during the first day of season 2 of Dragonflight, which will be released one week after the official release of patch 10.1. So I'm sure that by now you are aware of all the new things that will be added into the game in patch 10.1. For instance, we have a new zone, the Zarelec Cavern, we have a new raid, we have a new season for PvP and Mythic Plus. And with that, we have many new rares, new items you can craft and collect, and many new ways you can make a lot of gold in World of Warcraft. So as I always say, it's very important to do some of these activities during the first few days of a new patch, because this is probably when you will be able to make the most gold with some of these activities and items. So what I want to do again in today's video is just go through the list of all the new activities you can do in order to make some gold and really highlight the ones that you should do during the first few hours or first few days of the patch. I will divide this video into two parts. The first one will focus on day one of patch 10.1, so next Wednesday, and the second part on all the different activities that you will be able to do when season two will be released one week after that. Okay, so let's start with number one. And at number one, we're gonna have all the new materials that will be added into the game in patch 10.1. These materials include the Shadow Flame Essence, the Obsidian Cobra Skin, the Zarelec Glow Spores, and also the Dragotist. For the Dragotist, you will be able to craft it with Alchemy, as you can see, this is a transmute, and basically you will need 300 of Zarek Glow Spores and 50 of the Silken Gem Dust. Then, for the Glow Spores, you will be able to get some when mining or herbing in the cavern. Basically, sometimes you will find some metamorphic nodes or lambent herbs. These are just normal nodes and herbs, but they have like a glowing effect around it and so when you mine or herbs these different items you will receive some of these Zarek glow spores. One thing that is very important to mention is the fact that if you're playing on a character that has both mining and herbalism basically each time you either mine or herb one of these items you will receive a buff that lasts for two minutes. This is the Zarek glow burr and Zarek glow dust and if you manage to have both of these buffs on the same time after they both expire, you will receive an item, and inside this item, you will be able to get even more of these Zarek Glow Spores. So this is also a really good way to make even more gold with all these different Glow Spores. So I would highly recommend you to try and get one character with both Mining and Herbalism at the same time. Then at number two, what you really want to do, especially if you're someone who's planning to craft some of these items, is to start upgrading the reputation with the Loam Nifan. Because basically, when you reach Renon 2 or 3, you will be able to unlock a vendor that will allow you to buy all these new recipes and some other very interesting items. So as you can see, for instance, if you go here, this is the Alchemy uh, vendor. This one will be selling two recipes, including the one for the Transmute Dragotis, that is going to be extremely, extremely good, especially during the first few days and also this one for the Stinky Bright Potion. And as you can see, in order to buy them, all you need is to have the Ponzo Scream and also the Grimrog Timeshare Voucher. So basically, in order to get these items, all you need to do is, again, reach Renon level 2 or 3, and then you want to come here in the main town, the Loam, and you want to talk to Ponzo. Ponzo is a new mob that will basically allow you to buy all these new items, including some of these knowledge, profession uh, items for some of these barter bricks. And in order to get some of these barter bricks, you need to first unlock them with Ponzo, and then you will be able to get them when, for instance, opening treasures, when killing, I believe, rares and completing some of the world quests and everything inside the Zarek caverns. And also sometimes when doing some of the quests that you can find inside Valdrakan and that are linked to all the different professions. And so basically, as you can see, with these different barter bricks, you will be able to buy the Ponzo Scream and the Grimrock Timeshare Voucher. And then with these items, you will be able to purchase all these new recipes, plants, and techniques. And so like that, you will be able to make a lot of gold if you're amongst the first people crafting all these new items. Also, I haven't been able to confirm that yet, but I think normally you should be able to sell these different items on the auction house. And so if that's the case, 
you will probably also make a lot of gold just by actually selling these different items directly on the auction house. But again, I'm not 100% sure that it will actually be something you will be able to sell on the auction house. Then after that, at number three, what I would highly recommend you to do is to simply start crafting all these new items that you can unlock with all these recipes, plants, and everything you can buy from the different vendors in Luan. So for instance here, as you can see with black knitting, I have for instance the new uh, shadowed alloys that will definitely be interesting. I have this new item here, the shadowed belt clasp. As I mentioned just before, you also have for instance here with um, alchemy, the dragotist. So this one is actually going to be one of the best for sure, especially during the first week. So try to make sure that as soon as you can unlock all these recipes, you learn everything and you start crafting all these new items because trust me, if you're amongst the first people on New Realm and on New Region that can actually start crafting and selling all these items, you will probably make a lot of gold during the first few hours and first few days. Then at number four, what I would recommend you to do is to try and flip some of these new items, especially all the new materials. With the release of a new patch and with the addition to the game, of new materials and everything, it's very interesting because basically the value will vary a lot during the first few days and first few weeks. And so sometimes, especially when a lot of people start to farm all these different items and there is a huge quantity available on the auction house, the prices are going to tank a little bit. And so sometimes you can really find some very cheap auctions and you can just buy the stock and resell it. And like that, in many cases, you will be able to make millions of gold in profit. Of course, keep in mind, this is something that is very risky and it's very difficult to predict what will be the value of a specific item and a specific market one month in the future. So just if you are trying to do that, this is at your own risk. And sometimes you will be able to win a lot of gold, but also keep in mind, sometimes, unfortunately, you will lose a lot of gold. In particular, I think two items are going to be extremely interesting. The first one is, of course, the Zarek Glow Spore, because this is something that will be needed for most of the new crafts in patch 10.1. But this one is a little bit risky because it's something you can farm. So it means that a lot of people are going to farm it all day long and they're also going to have a lot of bots. And so there's probably going to have a huge quantity up on the auction house. And this is why I think it's going to be a very risky market still. Probably some people will be able to flip some of these items and make some profit. But it's, again, very risky. And then you have the Dracotis. The Dracotis, I think, is going to be way better simply because if it stays as, as it is right now in the PTR, you will only be able to craft it through alchemy. And as you can see, you have a limited capacity. You cannot craft it all day long. So it means that at some point, especially when Season 2 will be released and all these new crafts will be available, a lot of people are going to want to craft all these new items and so there's going to have a huge demand for these different dracotis but probably there's not going to have enough items up on the auction house and so what will probably happen is the fact that during the first week at some point there's going to have a huge quantity up on the auction house and not a high demand and so the value is going to tank a little bit and then as soon as season two will start the value is going to increase a lot and like that if you manage to snipe some of them before that you might be able to make a lot of gold then at number five, what I would recommend you to do is to simply farm some of the new pets that will be added into the game in patch 10.1 and that you will then be able to sell on the auction house. So as you can see, we're getting a lot of new pets in patch 10.1, but not all of them are pets that you can actually then cage and sell on the auction house. But some of them can, and probably during the first few days, you will be able to make a lot of gold if you manage to have them up on the auction house and if someone wants to buy it. And Normally during the first few days, this is the best moment to sell some of these new pets because a lot of people want to buy them and this is when you can also have a very high value. So for instance here, as you can see, we have this one, the teardrop moth that drops from a new rare and this rare is the Underlight Queen. Then we have a few others that are pretty interesting. For instance, this one that drops from Cobrock and Cobrock also drops this one right here. Then we have uh, right here this one that drops from uh, Aquifon. And also we have this one that drops from the Researchers Under Fire. So basically all these different mobs are new rares that you will be able to find in uh, this zone. And for the Researchers Under Fire, this is a mini event that will take place just here. So what I would recommend you to do really is to simply try with all your different characters to kill all these different rares, especially the ones I just mentioned. And hopefully you will be able to get one of these pets and then you just want to learn it, cage it, and then sell it on the auction house. 
hopefully for a big amount of gold. Then at number six, we have another pet that you really should try to get your hands on during the first few days, and this pet is Milo. Milo is one of the new pets you can buy with all the different pet charms, and as you can see this time, it will cost 2,500 pet charms. So this is a new dog that is really cute, and this is definitely something that, again, will sell for quite a lot of gold during the first few days. So if you already have some of these pet charms, what you can do is, as soon as you log in, try to go either uh, to see Explorer Berserk in the Zared Cavern or Pachu in the Azure Span and buy this item and then again post it on the auction house and hopefully you will be able to sell it for quite a lot of gold. So another thing you can do and that really is extremely easy, especially if you already have the currency. So I'm sure that there's going to have a lot of other things that you can do during the first week and that will probably be extremely interesting. But these are the main activities I really want to talk about in today's video. And now what I want to do is to also go through the first things you want to do during the first few days of season two, which again will be one week after the release of patch 10.1. So at number one, what I would recommend you to do is to simply farm all the new BOEs that will be available with the new raid. In total, we're getting, I believe, eight or nine new BOEs. And as always, these BOEs are gonna sell for a lot of gold during the first few days and first few weeks of the new patch, especially if you're playing again on a realm where there are some guilds that are pretty competitive and that requires to get some of the best gear possible, probably you will be able to get a lot of really good sales, especially if you manage to maybe have like some pretty good stats on some of these BOEs. So what I would recommend you to do again is to really try to get your hands on some of them and sell them. And then of course, what you can also do is try and flip some of these items because Sometimes some people will just do the raid. They won't really know the value of some of these items. And so sometimes you might end up finding some very, very interesting auctions for a very cheap price. Then after that, of course, what I think you should do on all your different characters is simply go through the raid in all the different difficulties to try and get some of the new plants and recipes that will be BOEs. So as you can see, you will be able to get some very, very interesting new BOEs and recipes, and if you manage to get your hands on some of them, you will probably be able to make millions and millions of gold. For instance, this one right here, the formula for the new ancient weapon, will sell for for sure two or three million each. So if you manage to get your hands on one of them, you will make millions. And again, keep in mind, you don't need to actually have enchanting or any of these professions to get it. It is a random drop for anyone who does the boss. So you have a lot of these different recipes and also what's interesting is the fact that all the different plants and recipes that were previously dropping from uh, the previous raid, the Vault of the Incarnates, will now be dropping from Aberys. So it means that you have double the chance at getting some really good plants and recipes. Then at number three, what I would highly recommend you to do is to just do some PvP, whether it is outdoor activities with Warmod on or PvP through arenas and battlegrounds because you will have a chance at getting all the new green plants and recipes that are BOEs and that will allow you to craft the new set Obsidian Combatant Set. All these different armor pieces are selling really, really well and the BOE patterns and plants are also selling extremely well. So for instance, if you manage to get your hands on the one for jewel crafting in order to craft the signet and the amulet, you will probably be able to sell it for three, 400k gold each easily. Then, of course, at number four, what I would recommend you to do is to simply craft all these new items because you will be able to make a lot of gold. So, for instance, as I just mentioned, you have all these new green PvP items that you will be able to craft. If you are playing on a jewel crafter, trust me, all the different rings and all the different amulets and everything are going to be extremely, extremely great. Same if you're playing on a tailor, the new cloaks and everything are also going to be things that you will be able to sell for a lot of gold. And finally, with inscription, you have all the new trinkets. So all these items are going to sell for a lot of gold. And then, of course, you have all the different items you will be able to craft through the crafting order system. For instance, uh, this new shield here. Uh, you have one cloak in particular that I think is going to be extremely interesting. And this is this one right here, the underlading spore cloak. So all these different items are going to be high in demand and again as it's pretty difficult to get your hands on these different plants and recipes if you manage to either loot them or buy them for a cheap price on the auction house then you should be able to make a lot of gold during the first few days and first few weeks if you craft a lot of them 
And then really the item that I think is going to be the best in order to make millions of gold is this one right here because keep in mind you will be able to sell all these different enchants on the auction house and these are region wide. So the first few people who will be able to actually craft these different enchants, especially with a big quality, will probably be able to make millions and millions of gold in just a few hours and in just a few days. So if you manage to get your hands on this formula, maybe you want to sell it or maybe you want to learn it. And if you learn it, trust me, you will probably be able to make millions and millions of gold just by crafting and selling on the auction house all these different enchants. And finally, at number five, what I would recommend you to do is to simply flip all these new items, whether these are the new BOEs from the raid or some of these new recipes, plants, and formulas that you can get. If you manage to find some of these items for a very cheap price, you might be able to make millions and millions of gold just by then reselling them for a better price. Especially what I'm sure a lot of people are going to do is track on all the different realms these different formulas and recipes and as soon as they can find one for a cheap price they will probably like try to buy it on this realm and then transfer it back on a high pop realm such as for instance kazakh or some of these realms and probably you will be able to sell it for four or five millions easily in the first few days this is what happened with the elemental laria and trust me the same is going to happen with these different boe recipes and plants so what I would recommend again is for you to try and find some for a cheap price and then reset the price, sell it for a better price and make a lot of profit. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I really hope it will help you make some gold during patch 10.1. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos, especially more videos linked to patch 10.1. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great start of the weekend. Bye.